are you familiar with the, the philosopher Nick Bostrom? Yeah. Uh, so uh, Nick is a very unusual and, and very smart guy who focuses on questions of existential risk. And he, he recently wrote a paper, or at least I recently read this paper. I don't, actually when he, I don't know when he wrote it, but I think it's recent, titled The, the Vulnerable World Hypothesis. And what he imagines is, that he, what he asks you to imagine is that we have an urn in front of us. He calls it the urn of invention. And the urn is filled with, with colored balls. Uh, and we have, we have been reaching into this urn rather compulsively, lo these millennia, pulling out either white or gray balls. And the white balls are inventions, pieces of technology, memes, cultural norms, institutions that have no real downside, right? These just make our lives better. And the gray balls are inventions, and they're like that have benefits and costs, right? So, you know, being able to split the atom is one, right? You like, you can produce energy, but you can produce bombs and, you know, waste when you produce energy. And so there, there are goods and harms that come from these inventions. What he asks us to consider is that, that there's a black ball or perhaps many black balls in the urn of invention, and we just haven't pulled one out yet. And a black ball is a technology which is synonymous with the end of civilization, right? And he, he goes into great detail about what, what, what sort of thing this might be and what we would need to do to stabilize civilization in the face of this possibility. And so, I mean, the first thing you're asked to acknowledge is that it seems rather plausible that there is a black ball or two in the urn of invention, right? There are things we could discover that we can't undiscover that could spell our doom because it becomes so easy for one deranged person to destroy the lives of millions or billions. So, I mean, one example is that he calls it the easy nukes case. I mean, just imagine if it were just a fact of nature that splitting the atom is much easier than, than it in fact is. And it turns out it only took taking two pieces of glass and a magnet and running some electric current through it. And then you've got a, you know, an atom bomb, right? Now, if it were that easy to make an atom bomb, one in a million people would make one, you know, more or less every day of the week, and we would just see cities going up in, in mushroom clouds, right? It would be the end of civilization if it were that easy to make a, an atom bomb. So we're just lucky that it's hard enough to refine the, the, the fuel, you know, and to build bombs, certainly large bombs. If climate change were going to be much worse than it seems likely to be, if, we're to, if we were talking about a 20-degree centigrade rise in temperature over the course of the next 50 years, unless we got our act together, it just may in fact be the case that we can't get our act together in the face of that risk, and we're done for, right? So we're, just, we're relying on luck in many, many places. So what, so the, but the punchline of this essay is that the only s scenario whereby we can actually deal with this risk and respond to it should it come to pass. I mean, should we, real or should we have the time to realize that we have pulled a black ball from the urn is to have what he calls a state of turnkey totalitarianism and hyper-technological surveillance, obviously enabled by some AI that we have not yet built, but he's imagining us surveilling one another at all times in as a reasonable way as possible with the data anonymized in all the ways we would want it anonymized, but basically to, to deliver a system where we could intrude on your behavior very, very quickly, you know, minority report style, where we, you know, there's an AI at every moment of the day watching what you're doing with your hands, right, uh, in a world that has pulled the black ball. You know, if it is trivially easy for anyone in this room to weaponize the, the flu of 1918 because all the data is out and you've got something on your desktop that can do it, right, and we can't uninvent this thing, then we need to know what you're doing with your hands. So the, the, the net result of this essay, for, I'm, I'm going to have Nick on the podcast at some point, but the net result of this essay is to suddenly make me open-minded to something which, if described in the absence of having considered the urn of invention and some of these examples, sounds like just the most dystopian horror show imaginable. I mean, a perfect surveillance and an ability to turn on totalitarianism at a moment's notice. How could that be at all desirable? 
it becomes at least potentially desirable if you grant that it may in fact be the only stable state for civilization in light of what we're currently doing. And what we're currently doing is just reaching into the urn and pulling things out as fast as we can without giving any thought really to what's going on. So anyway, that was a very long answer to a question you almost asked. Thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, here, thank you. Here.